I'm going to show you an easy way to set up the Fluval 307. First step is you take these pieces out of the canister and you see first you have your chemical, your activated carbon, which I will wash out, and you have your ceramic media. And then you have your polishing sponges and your course. So you should give everything a rinse off. There might be some, you know, sediment build up because of this stuff, but you wash everything out, including the activated carbon, and then you put back in the canister. And it will usually only fit one way. That's typically how it happens, yeah. So you'll see that this part can only go on that side, and then the three stacks of trays will go on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna wash everything out, rinse everything thoroughly, and put it back in the canister. Now this is a part that people forget to put on the top part of the canister filter with the brains in it. And if you don't put this on properly, it's gonna leak all over the place. It's happened to me before when I first started out in the hobby. Since then I've put a bunch of others together, so I never forget this part. Um, you'll see, it fits right into a slot, and I'll show you real quickly. You're gonna see that right under the 307, there's a ridge, and you wanna put the gasket in that ridge, and so it fits tightly, snugly around. Um, failure to do so will result in leaks, trust me. When you put the lid back on the motor, you wanna make sure that it fits properly. And so you wanna make sure that this lines up with that. And you'll see there's like a little line there and it kind of reflects, you know, what you have underneath too. So that's an easy way to remember it. Now a lot of people who, you know, put the brackets on the back of the tank, they mess up. They think it snaps on, but it actually slides. So let me just try to show you real quickly if this thing holds up. There we go. You'll see there's ridges. And simply slides in just like that. So you don't want to make the mistake of, of, of breaking it. Um, if you break it, you're going to have to get a replacement bracket if you want it to fit. I mean, you don't have to, but I prefer to have it all as tight as possible. Um, and so now I'm going to go ahead and mount them to the back of the tank and show you how to put you know, the little suction cups in and whatnot, and then we'll get on the tubing. Next, we want to do the intake. So we start with the intake. We take the hose, and because it's longer, so I always want to try that one first, and you run it along to where you need it to go. So up here, make sure that you keep your hose somewhat tight. You don't want to have kinks in it or, or, or loops. So you give yourself about three or four inches um, from the top of the tank as a cutoff point, so to speak. And then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna attach your intake. So go ahead and do that, I'll get right back. Again, you're going to slide this onto the back. You don't wanna clip it on, it slides on. It might be a little bit difficult at first, but trust me. Slide it on. Also, you can't really see right now, but you want to keep your your intake about two inches from the bottom of your tank. So I'm going to go ahead and fix this now, and then I'll start on the outflow. All right, just attach the outflow. I leave a little extra slack on there just in case I want to move it up a little bit, but I keep this tank at about this level just because of the wave makers and you know, I've been trying to not have the water touch this hang on the back filter, which I hope to get rid of very soon because it doesn't work that well. I've had a bunch of these Marine Land filters and they're just crap. Sorry, Marine Land, but they just stop working. The impellers break easily. And unless you're changing, you know, the stock filter or you're putting in your own sponges, it just doesn't function well. But that's what I have for now until I you know, finalize this setup. But as you can see, you have your intake and you have your outflow. 
I like to keep that at the top to create a little surface agitation for my African cichlids. So the next step is to prime. Now these Flugel 307s self-prime. There's a little lever and you just pump it a couple times and you get some water in the canister and you plug it in and that's that. So I'm gonna go ahead and test it out and hopefully everything is good. Now some Fluval canister filters you have to fill with water like the FX6. I have one of those on my 75 in the garage. But with these, there's a little pump, this gray piece right here, and you pump it up like three or four times and you should start seeing a little bit of bubble in your tank and you should start feeling, hearing the canister uh, fill with water. So I'm gonna go ahead and try that right now. All right, well, everything works fine. You can see the outflow right here. Just another tip I wanna give you. When you're priming the uh, 307, you should move the flow valve down a little bit, just so you can obviously get more water coming in. And once you, once you hear the water start filling up and you can kind of feel the weight a little bit in there, um, then you wanna plug it in. You might hear some noise again. You can always adjust your flow afterwards. Adjusting your flow, you know, is, is great, especially, you know, when you're keeping different types of fish. Here I'm keeping African cichlids. So I'll probably have it on somewhat high, but again, it's working perfectly. And I'm gonna go ahead and add some more water to this tank and probably, you know, do something with this thing, get it out of here in a little bit. I might keep it on just for, you know, the functionality in, in the bacteria for now. But there's plenty of beneficial bacteria in your substrate, on your rocks, on your wood. And again, if you have a new tank, you can set up a canister filter easily and just, you can add your C-Chem Prime and your C-Chem Stability. Stability will get your tank running in five minutes where you can add fish. I've done it plenty of times, but you know, the next step for me is just filling this tank back up, getting the lids back on. Might have to, you know, mess with the lids a little bit just to allow for the intake and the outflow. But overall, it's a pretty simple project. Now, just one more tip, because it's happening right now. You're, it might stop flowing for a little bit, maybe a couple seconds and come back on. That's normal. It's just trying to you know, create the pressure inside necessary for it to run properly. Another tip I want to give is about these glass or whatever they are, lids that you can get for the tank. This is a 55 gallon. And I forget what size these lids are. I think they're for like smaller tanks or something like that. But you have these pieces here that go in the back to provide more coverage. And obviously you can cut them out as necessary for your filters. Once you cut them out, keep them. Always keep them. Don't throw them out. I keep them for a situation just like this. I had some Fluval power filter in here before. Um, it, I removed it because it stopped working. That's another video that I have coming up. And in my bins in the garage, I keep all these extra pieces just in case. And so here, I'm gonna be able to fill this in without any issue. I won't have to go out and buy another lid or anything like that. So when you're cutting your, your plastic for the lid connector, I suggest you keep the pieces around just in case you decide to change your filtration. As you can see, I removed the Marine Land Penguin 350B. Didn't need it anymore. But some people do broaden an HOB with their canister filters. There's nothing wrong with that. I just think, you know, it wasn't that effective. So why even have that unsightly thing on the tank that makes a bunch of noise? I still haven't filled this back up yet, but I will do so tonight. I'll do a water change with it. Why not? It's water change Wednesday. But you can see, I mean, I keep a pretty heavily stocked tank and uh, everything is good in here. So I hope this was helpful. I skipped over some minor parts, but overall I, I gave you, I wanted to give you more of the tips um, because anyone can watch a YouTube video and figure this out for themselves or obviously read the instructions. But I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, please contact me on YouTube or hit me up on my Instagram account, Strictly Fishness. I'm always happy to answer any questions or discuss anything about fish. 
So feel free to reach out to me if you need anything.